Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Bushnell. Earlier this year, in May in fact, Bushnell was the host of the Jeep Blitz. And hundreds of Jeeps and Jeep owners from all over the country came to Little Bushnell to show off their stuff. And the reason they came to Bushnell is because many of the products that are in their Jeeps are made right here. Mark Rauschard, who would have thought that Little Bushnell would be the destination of hundreds of Jeep lovers? Um, one weekend a year, this will be the, for the last two years, right. uh, Bushnell's hosted these hundreds of Jeepers that come in here for the obstacle course and, and, and all these interesting runs. And it just kind of came about, didn't it? It came about through necessity. The old saying that need is the mother of invention is mm -hmm. very true. And it's especially true for us. Okay, so how did the Jeep, how did outfitting Jeeps fit into this Jeep Blitz idea? So we go to a lot of festivals for our business. It's how we get people interested in our product, but the whole industry feeds upon itself. People buy a Jeep, they go to a festival, they start seeing that there are all kinds of accessories you can put on it. Mm -hmm. So you can accessorize it to fit your lifestyle, you can accessorize it to just have a personalized Jeep, something that's flashy or just looks how you want it to look. And so people will go to that and they'll be like, oh, well, how do I do this and how do I uh, find suppliers to do it and they find clubs so they find people of like interests mm -hmm. but we talk about it because we do some parts for some other markets and Jeep is very unique there's they're selling a lifestyle and they're selling a way to personalize your vehicle it's yeah. it's an interesting phenomenon well and that's what you do here at Steinjaeger in, in right in downtown Bushnell you right. have a plant that makes not one or two or three, but a multitude of, of parts for like aftermarket parts right. to trick out your Jeep. Exactly. And so all of these Jeep lovers come to Bushnell because this is where you are, where Steinjaeger is, and, uh, and you host them and you have, in fact, while we're talking about this, let's roll some video from Jeep Blitz because so, the, so we, people can get an idea of what it must look like here um, for this one weekend of the year. And we, we obviously, we really do have hundreds of, uh, of Jeeps. And, and this year, the weather was not that kind to you. It was really, really wet, wasn't it? I'm not one to watch the weather. And about two weeks before, I started watching the Weather Channel. And I almost thought about logging, you know, it's 80% chance of rain, 40% chance of rain, because yeah, it yeah. bounced around and it just... The weather could have been worse, but not much. <laughs> Friday night when we had our show and shine, it was cold and rainy. The band stopped early. It kept the crowds away. Um, the guys who were in the band had to wear uh, hoodies and yeah, hats yeah. to um, be warm enough to actually be outside playing. But Saturday morning, I got a kick out of it. It just poured. The show started at 9, and I was in the headquarters trailer doing some last-minute paperwork just put on my new rubber boots. We sent somebody down to Macomb to get some rubber boots for me because we knew it was just going to be a disaster. And you can see in the videos how wet it was that day. Oh my goodness. The show starts at 9 o'clock at 8.40. The gal who is going to sing the Star Spangled Banner for us, her mom texts me, is it still on? <laughs> <laughs> have you canceled? <laughs> kind of like, have you canceled yet? And at exactly 8.59, where I was standing, the rain stopped. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I thought, well, this is great. Perfect timing. And it really didn't rain the rest of the day, but boy, was it wet. So you've got an obstacle course, and it's a permanent obstacle course because you've got the, the obstacles. are you're, Nobody's going to move them, right? I mean, right. They, they are where they are, and that's right. what they're going to be. McDonough County has a 20-foot hill now. It's on the <laughs> Steinjaeger <laughs> test track. That's what it's called, the test track? I love yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And of course, we you know we can see these 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 boulders that these vehicles have to drive over, and of course the brought the, those uh, in from local quarry last mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. We don't assume that they're going to wash away anytime soon. And, and you also have trail rides. So what you do is go way out in the country, I guess, huh? Yes, we had this year. The first year we had one trail ride. This year we expanded it to two. It takes a lot of time to prep the trail ride, so we've been reaching out to some of the clubs in the area. In the area for us here is as far away, 180 miles away in St. Louis and 60 miles away in Peoria. But the we've got a team that goes out and preps and cleans the trails 
And then we had some guys who would lead the Jeeps out. And I think this year we did 10 to 15 per trail ride. The first year we did 30 and we got some mm -hmm. feedback that that might be too many. So we had one trail ride down off out in the middle of nowhere near Marietta. And then we had another trail ride on a quarry about 30 miles away and everybody had a great time. But because of the weather, some of the things that we thought would be for starters and beginners were much more difficult than that. Mm -hmm. And the guys who were in charge of that stuff did a great job of basically improvising at the last minute. Mm -hmm. So you had people here from, I mean, do you keep track of where they come from? Oh yes, absolutely. I can probably, um, we might want to. Okay, so the red, the, the little red buttons or the little flag pins. Well, yep. This that's is, where they came from, yep. huh? Okay, heavy this concentration of the Midwest and upper Midwest. But you had some, some from Florida? Florida, Oklahoma. North Carolina was a surprise. Um, <laughs> the folks from Minnesota were, they, they manufacture bumpers. They were here mm -hmm. as exhibitors. But um, yes, really a strong concentration from this part of Illinois into Iowa and yeah. Chicago. Mm -hmm. When you think about where the other shows are, the closest one is 500 miles away in Michigan. There is a show in Louisville, which is closer, but it's more of a hybrid business to business end user show. Mm -hmm. Then you have to go out, clear out by Cincinnati to find comparable shows. And most of the shows are out east. Pennsylvania has a number of them, New Jersey, Maryland, Florida has four of them, Georgia, a couple in Tennessee. There's a new show that started in Texas, and then you're basically out to the famous one in Utah, the Moab Easter Jeep Safari, and then there are a couple in California. Yeah, and since you, Steinjager, since your company makes a lot of these uh, materials, you go to some of these shows actually right. as a vendor, I guess. Huh? Yes. Yes, some of them are huge. Some of them get up yeah. to 3,000 Jeeps, which of course we'd love to see happen. Wouldn't that be great in Louisville? Yes. <laughs> but our, our feeling is, is if the show can break even and everybody who comes in has a good time, yeah. the show's going to grow. So. Well, Mark, we mentioned several times that your company makes these, these uh, accessories for Jeeps here in Bushnell. And what I've asked you to do here is bring up a model Jeep and you can show us if a person wants to trick out a Jeep with the stuff you make here in Bushnell, you can show us what, how, how that's done. Great. So, a uh, great thing about Jeeps, you can take the doors off, and as soon as people do, they want to put other doors on. So we make <laughs> tubular doors. Uh, fun thing about this material, it's the same material that we've used to build handrails and grab handles for John Deere combines. That's why it was in our system. So we make the doors, mm -hmm. we make armrests, <laughs> we make inserts, and you can colorize those. Yeah. Um, forgive me if you don't like my color matches here. Um, each his own, to each his own. Yep, so we make an attachment to put a mirror on the tube door. You can actually put on a net instead, and we also make that here. Mm -hmm. And there's some funny stories about us learning how to cut and sew when we've been <laughs> a metal fabricating shop for all these years. Some people, once you lift your Jeep, it's harder to get up in there. So, so there's a stirrup. Yep, some of our, uh, our black yeah. op department came out with stirrup steps. And cool. those are pretty popular. Yeah. What if you want to take the lid off that thing? Okay, so we're going to take the roof off. And um, just a quick reminder, this is not quite debugged. So it's not out in the public yet, but we, okay. we've still got some issues to work through. Okay. But we make this um, cargo net. And then we make what's called... Now, uh, let, me, let me stop you for a minute. The cargo sure. net, if you, if you turn this thing... I mean, why would you need that unless you turn it over? Why would you need cargo net? Because if you... Bounce around, things might fall out, luggage, dogs... <laughs> Children. Um, and, but you know what? The, the reality of Jeeps is that you get things that look good and you might use them. Mm -hmm. It's a fun place for people to spend money. <laughs> I mean, I've heard it enough now. Um, Jeep stands for just empty every pocket. Yeah. It reminds me a bit of the things that now, is that a say. sun is that a sunscreen? Is that what that is? Yes, we call this a teddy top. Uh -huh. I'll tell this story and you can edit it out. Luke, our engineer, was working at a show in Pomona, California, and I was driving through western Missouri calling on dealers. Mm -hmm. And we were calling this by someone else's name. There was a trade name on another product out there. And we knew we were okay to use it amongst ourselves, but we're like, we have to come out with our own name 
for the but but up because we can't call it that out in public. Okay. And he's like, well, do you have any suggestions? And well, I, I think I need to say that bikini top is the well-known trademark okay. for these, right? Mm -hmm. So Luke, who, like I said, our engineer, he goes, do you have any suggestions? And here I am driving through Western Missouri and I'm talking on the cell phone, hands-free of course, and I'm like, how about a negligee? And Luke goes, can you spell it? <laughs> I could not spell it. So to make fun of me, he goes, can you spell Teddy? And I'm like, Teddy Top, that's it. So we trademarked this as the Teddy, Teddy Top and top. went through the process. Okay. Very catchy. So that's a Steinbaker Teddy, yes. But it's uh, because I couldn't spell and someone was making fun of me is how we came up it with the name better. of it. Yep. Now, a lot of folks want to raise raise up their Jeep, don't they? And don't you get a lot of call for that? Well, we, we certainly encourage people to raise their Jeep. So we do a two and a half and a four inch lift and we might uncover some software issues here, but the green tubes under here, mm -hmm. We make, then we buy the springs domestically, but we powder paint them. But it's it's a nice advantage for us that we can make mm -hmm. all of these other parts entirely in-house. So we make the tube in-house, we weld it, mm -hmm. we powder coat it. We even mold the polyurethane and now rubber bushings that go in the mm -hmm. end of these. So we're very vertically integrated. Mm -hmm. And if, so, if a person wanted that installed, you, you would also do that here? Uh, we will, yes, okay. absolutely. Yep. Again, please forgive me for my color choices here. Kind of wild. So rock slider, this is a fun one. You know, here in Western Illinois, there are oh, all kinds of it's rocks. It's called a rock slider, huh? Yeah, a rock slider. So if you go through a narrow, uh, a real narrow slot, that keeps you from rubbing up against exactly. the wall. Exactly. Okay. You probably should buy a winch if you're going <laughs> to actually use your rock slider. But if you just want it to look pretty, hey, mm -hmm. that's okay with us. Yep. So all of this stuff we're making here in um, our factory, and it's just a hoot. It's fun to design. It's great and fun to sell. The people who are making it enjoy it because it's a lot more apparent to them that this is a part on a Jeep mm -hmm. that they can see as opposed to maybe something that goes in the inner workings yeah. of somebody else's tractor. Yeah. Okay, and the next thing I want to do is I want to go into your shop where you actually make this stuff. You can show us an example of how, like maybe the netting and maybe the... The, uh, what's this called again? The rock slider. The rock slider, I yes. like that. And some of the tubular things. Show yep. us how that's Great. done. Great. I'd love to show you around. Thank you. Mark, I, I asked you earlier about, you know, why would you need these cargo nettings, right? Because because the Jeep bounces up and down, down. And that's what she's putting together here, isn't it? She is. Now, we call these door nets. And the door net is, so what happens is somebody takes off the, the doors to their Jeep, and then they're like, well, I want a little better feel. So then they get tube doors, like the one you're holding. And then they decide, well, I want to style out the door. So they end up getting a door net. How does this work? Yeah, it's, it's upside down. But oh, is it? Let me, yeah. let me do this. The net can follow it, though. OK. And it ends up looking something like this. And then uh -huh. we also, in this room, make um, mesh covers for the doors. And one of those fun things we had to get into when we started making these doors, somebody immediately started asking us to put some cloth in them. We're like, really? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we can right, do that. Right. Well, and, and you made this too, right? Yes, we And this make is that. tubular. Yes, that's tubular. Except for this. Yep, I guess that's this a pin. A, so a we pin, turn right. that pin in the other room, and then we fabricate the tube in our factory, and we MIG weld it here, mm -hmm. we powder paint it here, and then this one's got a great green raindrop hydrographically dipped finish. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It does look like raindrops on there. Yes. Now you, okay. can get, you can get black skulls if you want. You've got all kind of, let's go see how you, how you package the products that you make here. I think you've got somebody busy doing that for us. Yes, so a lot of our dealers want a product that's actually ready to hang out and display. And this type of packaging is called skin packaging. What, what are those? Okay, so those are mirror heads. The mirror heads we buy, but the mirror legs we manufacture. Mm -hmm. So when you've got the door off of your Jeep and you decide that you want a side view mirror, these fit that black rod, which is basically mm -hmm. the door leg or the mirror leg, that fits inside of where your door normally would be. So that fits in the door mm -hmm. hinge. And then that gives you a mirror on the side. Go ahead mm -hmm. and actuate it, Sam. It is. It's warming up. It's got to come down. Okay, so it, Oh, so it's shrink wrapped, so it's got to warm up, huh? I can, see, I can see at the top here where it's, where it's getting warmer. Yeah. Now, will it go automatically now? Okay. 
And what is that package? Those are just mirror, mirror heads, is that what they're called? Yes, so this would be a JK magnetic mirror, is how we would describe it. Okay, and, the, and these go to your dealers then, these or go to, to the, the shows that you go to. Yep, you, to the you shows. Package them and you, you sell them just like this. Yep. Okay. She'll cut. She'll trim the sides off and label it, and put. Uh, they call them sombrero hats or a hang hole in it so that it'll mm -hmm. hang on the uh, display racks. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've gone from downtown Bushnell to the west side of Bushnell, and yep. this is Midwest Controls plant number two. Yes. Right. But you make Midwest Controls makes the Steinjager products, exactly. right? And so this is part of the process here. And I asked you to grab the, the grab, grab handle, bar, right. the grab handle. Okay, when, when, you, when you trick out your Jeep and you want to hang on, you got to have something up here to hang on to hang because on. you're bouncing around, right? Also helps you get into the Jeep because hopefully you've lifted the Jeep so you're higher up off the ground. You have to have something to get in. Okay, and you manufactured the grab handle and yes. that'll go right on the, on the upper uh, yep. uh, frame, I, yep. framework, I right guess. Right in the upper corner of the mm -hmm. A-pillar. Uh -huh. And then uh, these down here, I love this story. About this. I said, what the heck is this? It looks like something to put your foot on. And you said, well, indeed it is. And why would you put your foot on that? So you got your doors off on your Jeep. Okay. You want that fresh air feeling of mm -hmm. air on your foot. Of course, we say in our advertising that don't drive with these on. But you put this over your lower door hinge and we mold a polyurethane sleeve that goes inside of this uh -huh. so it dampens it helps it stick on there uh -huh. and also keeps you from scratching your hinge and allows you to put your foot like this. So it's an awful lot like a foot peg on a bike, a motorcycle. On a motorcycle. Yep. <laughs> so you and put your foot out the door, in all, other words, and exactly. you have somewhere to put it. All of these door. things we've got 17 <laughs> different colors for. <laughs> and the painter, the painter's not working today or we'd see him painting, would it? Now we, we made a big deal out of lifting your Jeep, right? Yes. And so you have to have really strong um, is this a bar? Is that what I'm holding? Is it a bar? It might be called or a track bar, but it's it's actually made out of tubing. So mm -hmm. this part's tubing. This is the threaded portion. Mm -hmm. And then there's a housing here. We powder paint it in this room. And then we put in, at the other plant, we mold a polyurethane or a rubber bushing that goes in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything that you would need if you want to lift your Jeep and make it more clearance, right? You want more clearance. Yep. What are these things? So this is a flagpole. So you put a, a receiver in your hitch and you can fly a flag. And the story I tell on this one, when people say, oh, that's just the perfect tubing size, uh, we ended up with too much of this tubing size, which is why we picked on it for this design. Uh -huh. And we finally burned through all of this because it turned out to be a decent design. And so now we've had to order some more, which is great. That's the <laughs> that's ideal great. thing. Burn through it and then order more. So this one is much like the foot peg in that it fits over the door hinge, but this goes over the upper door hinge and there's a thread on here so you can tighten it on. There's polyurethane that we mold in the other plant uh -huh. that goes up inside so you don't scratch your hinge. We paint it all kinds of crazy colors and then you can put a mirror on here. So it's when you've got your doors off, uh -huh. you can have a side view mirror as you're driving down the road. And you make all this stuff here. We make all of this stuff Fascinating. here. Fascinating. Yes. <laughs> Mark, earlier in the other building, we saw the mirror heads, and I guess were those posts that, they, that would attach to the car, right? Yes. Those are made here too, and that's what your welder's doing. Yes, it? yep. So we make the legs downtown, that's mm -hmm. our wire facility, and then here we're welding them, and then we'll also powder paint them here. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it difficult to operate out of two locations, or you just don't somehow make that work? We've been doing it since 1990, so we've gotten used to it. Mm -hmm. There's no ideal scenario. Of course, being in one building would be ideal. It would be perfect, right. wouldn't it? But you just, it's not the way it is. These, these over here now are finished after what he's, he's taken the pipe. I guess that's called a pipe or a pin. That one's a solid, so that would a be a, a bar, okay. yes. And then he's put the, he actually has to know exactly what angle to lay that out on. The too, leg, yes. Yeah. His fixture helps him do that. Uh -huh. And so every one of those, are those all identical? They yes. Are? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then, like we saw the young lady at the other place, they then they get uh, they get painted, I guess. Then and yep. then they get paired with the mirror head, yep. and then, then packaged package together for the dealers. And for your dealers. Right. And then, uh, if you when if you need a new mirror, then you've got everything you need to install it. Yes. Okay, a laser machine. A lot of people have seen laser etching. 
Right. But yours is different, isn't it? Ours is a little different in that we had to get one that would burn on a curved surface. Typically, if well, a tube is basically a curved surface, yeah. and those were a little bit less common than the flat ones. They are readily available if you know what to look for. But if you go to somebody and say, "I want a laser etching machine," you're going to they're going to offer you one that starts out with flat. Yeah. So it took us a while to find one. And, and branding in this business is really important, isn't it? It's very important. I don't know if I have a hard and fast statistic, but we kind of say, and you could say maybe jokingly, maybe seriously. For every sale we make, we're going to make three more sales if the customer knows who we are. Obviously, we have to make sure they have a good experience with all of that. You, when you started Steinjaeger, you had to learn what you didn't know first, and that led to you into doing a little research on new equipment that you needed, like this laser equipment. A lot of things. We bought a plasma cutter so that we could cut plates, and we were using those for prototype bumpers, which aren't in production yet probably going to lead to us buying a laser cutting machine, different type of laser, but an upgrade from plasma. We had to learn how to cut and sew, and then how to cut grommets and hot knives, and we watched mm -hmm. some pretty fun videos trying to figure out how to do some of that stuff that doesn't come out of our metal fabricating yeah. background. Right. Had to buy a CNC bar machine, those green raindrops we were looking at earlier, that was a hydrographic dipping process. We had to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. Luke Connor, at the beginning of the program, we saw the obstacle course. We saw the Jeep Blitz obstacle course. And um, I was hoping that we'd have time to go do it. And since you'd helped develop these products for Steinjaeger, you're also a Jeep guy and you're a good driver, I've been told. So yeah. I, hope, I hope all that's true. You are a good driver, right? Yes, sir. Okay, because I'm looking at that hill right there and it looks like something to go up. We're it's, not going to tip over. Fun. We're not going to roll, are we? Not at all. Okay. I'm going to belt up here. Do you have your seatbelt on? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm gonna belt up. Okay, there we go. Let's let's hit it. Oh, <laughs> oh good. feel like I'm at Six Flags, Luke. <laughs> well, here's the drop. Yeah, it's a roller coaster, all right. My goodness. I'm glad your brakes work. Okay, a little humping action then. Okay. And this one, you'll lose the side of the ground before you start coming back down. <laughs> wow. Oh, these were built strategically too, weren't they? Yes, sir. They were built to handle the approach angles and descent angles of a stock Jeep. A stock Jeep. Stock so Jeep. So when people come to the Jeep Blitz and they get a stock Jeep, they should be able to handle this. That right? side of the course, yes. Yeah, okay. But not this side, huh? Not this side. Oh man. When this is when this is mud like it was at Jeep Blitz, it's a mess, isn't it? Oh, it was filthy. We <laughs> ended up with four brown Jeeps in our crew. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm amazed that a vehicle can handle this. I've got a Jeep, I'm, and mine's a stock Jeep. I'm glad I didn't bring it out here. Well, we would have shown you how to get up that hill and have a good time. Oh, straight up. Oh. <laughs> there, it disappears on you again. <laughs> the people that come out for the Jeep Blitz, I guess a lot of them got stuck, didn't they? Yes, we uh, we had one of our big rigs out here running recovery all day long. Mm -hmm. Seems like we've just been here. Now, you've got a the lift package on this one, I guess, right? Yep, we've got our four inch lift on here with 35 inch tires. Mm -hmm. And when you scrape, like I heard it scrape earlier, that doesn't worry you because you got some kind of a plate on the bottom of this thing? Yep, they right? got skid plates under them and it's what they're made to do. Mm -hmm. That's why they're there. Well, Luke, we're just about out of time. I think you and I are gonna finish this up and then, then we're gonna call it a day. All right. But in closing this program, I wanna thank you and everybody at Steinjaeger for showing us all this. It's been a terrific, it's been a terrific ride. 
And uh, for our viewers who are looking forward to next year's Jeep Blitz, it has not been set in stone what the date of the Jeep Blitz is going to be yet, but there is a planned third Jeep Blitz in Bushnell, and if you're a Jeep freak, you just got to be there. With another Illinois Story in Bushnell, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.